Hey, what's up guys? I have a quick little video for you with a really handy tip. Uh, some of you might already be aware of this, so if so, disregard. But I know a lot of people aren't aware of this, and for those people, uh, this could be really handy for some, some of your projects. So as you know, um, most of your microcontrollers run at either 5 volts or 3.3 volts, but other stuff in your project might run at 12 volts or higher. And so you got to have a way to step your voltage down. Uh, now you can use a linear regulator. They're dirt cheap, like the LM317. But the problem is, you know, they put out a ton of heat. The bigger the voltage differential is between the source and whatever you're stepping it down to, the more heat it burns. And uh, they're just not ideal. They're not efficient. And there really isn't much, much of a reason anyone should be using those anymore because you can get switching ones for not much more money. Uh, but if you're not going to be doing anything where you're spinning your own PCB or even doing a perf board. If you're not going to do any of that, then there's no reason to do this anymore. I have a better alternative. So uh, here is what I recommend. Uh, it's They're called BECs in the uh, RC world, the radio control like airplane and car world. Uh, BEC stands for battery eliminator circuit. So uh, where this originated from back in the day, if let's say you had a radio controlled airplane that was electric, um, you would have a tiny little like nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride, like a four cell uh, battery that was five volts that you would use for your receiver and then your receiver and your servos because your receiver powered your servos and they all ran at five volts. And then you would have like a three cell, three, well, three cell and up battery that would be you know 12 volts and up for your act the actual electric motor that f flies the damn plane and so you'd have two separate batteries you'd have to deal with and then it was like twice the place where you could have a failure and it was just a pain and then some smart person at one point came along and said hey let's just make let's just run it at the higher voltage and then have a buck converter that steps the uh, voltage down for just the receiver and the servos and so that is where the buck converter came to life and as you can see from these prices they're they're really really cheap so let me find one of the hobby king ones because they're they're pretty good and they're really cheap so check this out um, absolutely tiny and as you can see it says 22 AWG so that should give you an idea of how small this is now uh, and it's, it's got a nice JST connector on the end, or in the RC world they call it a JR or Futaba connector. I think Futaba is the same. It just has a little like alignment tab on one side. But either way, these will fit 0.1 inch pitch uh, headers. And I use the, these in a ton of projects. I used to use uh, these type of things like... Uh, why are they not showing up in the results? Well, either way... Um, I used to use this type of thing, as you can see, like the price is twice as much. But I've had problems with the output drooping, the output not being consistent with the input swinging, um, and I've had reliability issues with these things and issues with noise. But uh, if you get one of these things, um, as as you know, servos are really susceptible to noise and jitter. They will jitter and whine, and they just have noise issues so you got to keep everything nice and quiet no ground loops uh, and lots of beating lots of ferrite beads so that's why they put a choke on on the output of these things and man they get these things nice and quiet they put out a very smooth clean 5 volt output and uh, and most of them will do usually no lower than about 3 amps so and the, and the reason for that is because it's not the receiver it's uh, it's the servos that are connected to the receiver that'll be drawn a ton of current so um, this is the low end. You can get ones that'll do 20 amps. No kidding. Um, so, anyways, you would hook this end up to your battery, you know, your higher voltage battery, and this will do anywhere from 6 to 23 volts. And sometimes they'll they'll list it by cell, two to five cell. All you have to know is that one lipo cell is 3.7 volts. So you'd take, you know, if, if you had a two cell, it'd be two times 3.7. So um, that is how you'd figure out what the input is if they don't actually list the voltage like this one does. Then output, they do have ones that'll do 3.3 volts, but th if they don't mention the voltage, then you can assume it's 5 volts, because that's pretty much what all RC receivers and servos run at. Now, there are 3.3 volt ones, but they'll specifically specify that in the title. Um, they're tough, they can handle a ton of heat, 
um, vibration. I've not had a single one of these fail, and I've used these in RC cars, airplanes, quadcopters, my hexacopter. Actually, no, I lied. I don't use those in my quadcopter, but I use it in the other mention. Actually, no, not even in my recent RC car, and I'll show you the reason in a second. Actually, I guess I'll just show you now. Um, if you have a new RC car that uses brushless motors, you have to have a brushless motor controller. And as you can see, this one is $6.47. Um, and as you can see right here, it says BEC 5 volt 3 amp. So they basically build one into the brushless motor controller. Let's see if I can close that. So um, the smaller wire here, with a connector that's terminated onto the end of it. It looks kind of like the output of a BEC, but it's actually the input in this case. Uh, the white wire um, is basically like the PWM signal to tell the, the motor controller like how high or low to run your motor at. But the black wire obviously just ties the grounds together, but the red wire is the five volt rail that everything inside your RC car or airplane is tied to. Uh, it actually outputs five volts to that. Now, I have heard that and I, I could see how you know it would be a bad thing if you have multiple DC to DC converters all tied together in one circuit that you'll have some like uh, ground loop issues and some noise issues of having the multiple uh, boost converters together uh, some play along nicely some don't and to be safe if you have a quadcopter you'd have four motor controllers one for each motor uh, you would just basically let one of them power the receiver and the flight controller and then for the other ones, you would just cut the red wire. You'd need the black one still, obviously, so you have a ground reference, but uh, you would cut the red one on all of them except one. But um, I believe I've not done that before and been perfectly fine, but uh, it probably depends, and you should probably do it just to be safe. Uh, so these, uh, the left side goes to the battery, the right side is the output that goes to the motor, and the reason there's three wires is because the motors have multiple phases because they're brushless. Um, so yeah, if you go that route, if you're doing an RC-related project, you probably don't need a BEC because your your uh, speed controller will actually have a BEC built into it. So as soon as you plug this into your flight controller or your receiver, it'll power your receiver or flight controller through the wire that's actually telling it what to do. So that's pretty sweet. And they're not that much. $6 for a brushless controller. And I don't know if you've messed with brushless motors, these modern ones. They are insane. They're so insane, in fact that uh, people prefer them to the gas-powered RC stuff. Now, the gas-powered stuff, you just smoke the electric stuff, but that was back before before lithium batteries, before brushless motors. And so you'd have brushed motors, uh, and then you would have brushed motor controllers, and then you'd have, which put out a ton of heat, and then you would also have um, crappy uh, NICAD batteries and nickel metal hydride batteries. and you know they're not terrible but man they're not very good and plus the voltage on those things just drops like crazy as you drive it so lithium is like a flat plateau you know there isn't a whole lot of difference between a full battery and then one that's about to die off they're, they still they stay pretty stout through your whole drive or flight um, so anyways I'm I'm uh, digressing so uh, anyways uh, you can find them on Amazon this one's prime for you know two, the free two day shipping and it's ten bucks so if you want to get it stateside to your door in two days you can get you can get one for as cheap as ten dollars and as you can see that's 0.1 inch uh, headers on the right side so that'll give you kind of an idea of how small the whole unit is and that one will do uh, three amps five volts out so actually it says five amp I think it means three continuous five uh, peak but anyways uh, they're cheap they're handy you can get them anywhere you can get them on Amazon two day through Prime uh, hobbyking.com though is where I recommend if you want to get if you don't mind waiting for them to ship from China but actually this specific one if you go to their site they have little flags like if you're in the United States you'll see a, fl a little thing right here it says USA West Warehouse and it says in stock so obviously if I bought this it would ship from this warehouse and it might only take a week and I can get it for three dollars seventy seven cents and at that rate I would probably buy four or five just to make the shipping worth it I don't think shipping's very much either to be honest um, but if, if it doesn't ship from there, um, like if it doesn't have any of these flags, it's shipping internationally, it'll come from China, and it could take a while. So, um, but it's worth the wait. The stuff you find on this website is insane. If you've never been a Hobby King and you you do electronics and RC hobby kind of stuff, just go check it out. Um, some people complain, oh, it's just Chinese crap, some of it's low quality. But, you know, honestly, I've really not had too many problems with this stuff. 
and uh, they have a kind of like Amazon instead of reviews. Well, I guess they're kind of like reviews. You can come down. They've they have a whole lot of uh, people posting reviews about it. You know, I bought it. It doesn't work. Or I bought it. The voltage is drooping. I bought it and it has noise. People will post in the comments, and so uh, you can kind of learn about it a little bit before you buy it. So, but if you get a popular one like this one, there'll probably be more comments. No, maybe not. Well, anyways, um, I guess that sums it up. There's no need to, uh, if, if you don't have a need to um, basically build your own DC to DC, like buck converter circuit, um, and it's this is some project where maybe it's just an Arduino with a shield and you just need to give it some power and the, everything else in your project is running off 12 volts. Um, instead of going this route, as where if you read the reviews on a lot of these, uh, a lot of people had... Uh, the capacitors blow out on them because they put some cheap capacitors that were running a lower voltage than the output of the unit is capable of, so it would actually exp like pop, which is really dangerous. You could lose an eye. Um, people have had these things just go go out and stop working, and I've actually had one. I think I've this one. I think I have a couple of these, and and yeah, they're not designed very well. I've I've just had a lot of trouble keeping the voltage stable. I'd set the voltage, and then if the input changes at all, the output kind of swings with it, and it's just not that great. So if you don't want to mess with these stupid things from Amazon, uh, get a BEC. You can get them for as cheap as three dollars, shipped from the United States, or they even have. If you're over in Europe, you know you can get them to ship from the UK, Australia. It's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I still somehow managed to take something this quick and simple and turn it into a ten-minute video, but uh, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, if your project needs to step a higher voltage down to something that your microcontroller needs to run at, then uh, pick one of these up. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.